solving by the optimization of diversity, we have reached a lot of 10 times energy difference. That's caused a big variation between energy usage between each other. And according to a lot of the field tests, if you compare your energy field with your neighborhood, the, the energy consumption is very significant and influenced by the, how you use the energy, air conditioning, lighting system. Because we need to get up early, one hour in 
the summertime. The purpose is to try to let people get up early and sleep early. That we reduce the artificial lighting we use in the residential. Because in the uh, commercial building, you uh, continuously using the day artificial daylight, artificial light is nothing with the other any consumption. So the uh, uh, estimate for simulate data, we will save quite a lot of energy. For instance, three point five percent of electricity, electricity saving uh, in New Zealand. But the reality is quite a lot of field tests to to say the. Uh, because the people we are continuously using quite a longer artificial light, and uh, also the light and consumption in the residential building is now very small proportion in the total energy we use for the air conditioning part. We will never uh, have to be influenced by the uh, daylight, uh, the, the summertime. So uh, there will not be very good, uh, we say, proof, uh, scientific proof to say. The uh, daylight time is really saving the daylight uh, of uh, artificial light and consumption. So the problem we are facing is conventionally we say everybody should do something uh, like some in you know, some way. We assume for like a robot, or they need to come to the office on time. They need to come to work, uh, do everything. But the reality is people are so very stochastic. And they will change behavior uh, and also bring uh, in a complex way. So they make a big gap between our mirror data with our simulation data. They always have a big gap. This big gap can sometimes come to a very really bad result that a building assumes it's net zero energy building. But actually, they consume even more energy than the normal building, for instance, some uh, regime case. So it's really necessary to understand how the people will behave and uh, how we can simulate the people's behavior. So we would like to have some do some further research how to fill in the gap between the real world with our simulation world. So therefore, uh, it's necessary to provide a systematic approach to do the investigation of people's behavior and try to bring this kind of knowledge into real application in the building energy analysis. So uh, we will say this behavior research is a very, very interesting part. It's very strongly connected with building optimization, building design, and also building occupant centric control and retrofit, and also demand response with the more and more renewable energy adapt with the grid, and also uh, connect with policy making. Uh, for instance, they encourage many of the regular encourage people to. Uh, go to the stair rather than use the elevator to save energy. And also, very really important for the sociology people to analyze analysis motivation, uh, how we can persuade people, to encourage people to do something good. And also from the, our um, we say industry design, we need to design the interface of a machine and the people where to make people fully understand what the, your system would like to for instance, yesterday we have a meeting in the office room. There are around four PhD of uh, HV uh, building design section to to analysis how we can control with the uh, thermostat in the office uh, the meeting. So it's a uh, uh, thermostat is always a problem. Uh, we are always meet. So by this we would like set up one kind of systematic tech approach for the, how we can observe the people's behavior and also how we can dig out the feature about the people's behavior and uh, set up some numerical mo model to uh, estimate people's behavior in a statistical way and try to using some uh, evaluation way to make sure our model is more applicable with the real application. So first the research we have done is you, we need to identify the typical uh, occupancy profile uh, in the building. For instance, we would like to design this kind of uh, meeting room. We need to identify when is the peak load of the or peak operant ratio of this room. But we always lock off the data. We don't know how many people when they will come to this room. So how we can do that? 
Even before, we always have some counting. People manually count how many people go to the, uh, the other similar function room by people themselves, but it's a really uh, 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 need a lot of labor to do this work, and then you cannot last so long time. So we can, uh, we're using the position data by mobile phone, then we can get a lot of uh, uh, very long history and a very high resolution of the occupant ratio in many uh, commercial buildings and also transportation uh, buildings. Uh, for instance, we collect the around two years hourly data in many uh, commercial buildings. For instance, we can say we get the uh, three, uh, four railway stations, three airports uh, in China to know the, how the occupant ratio in their building uh, by the position data. And uh, I think this data is achieved, uh, is easy to achieve uh, in Australia either. And uh, also by this kind of uh, data, uh, we can easily to ask, uh, cast the typical day occupancy profile exposure. And also we can not only give the uh, daily exposure, and also we can generate the weekly exposure. For instance, it's very really interesting to say in the railway station, the peak occupancy ratio is not Monday, it's a, a, a Friday evening is the peak ratio because people would like to go for vacation during the night of the evening of the Friday. But for the peak uh, uh, occupancy ratio for the uh, airport, it's Monday morning. Uh, just to say, most of people, they are for business to travel by uh, flight. So that is uh, something we can learn by the position data to know the, how the people we are using the building and the, how is the peak of, um, hours for different kind of uh, building commercial complex. And by this kind of uh, research, we can easily compare with our previous uh, uh, with the schedule in our simulation. Uh, we compare the hospital occupancy pattern. Uh, by position data with uh, the uh, archery standard, we may find that in the, uh, especially in the total uh, heating load part, there are around 40 percentage of uh, relative difference. And for the cooling, uh, for the peak cooling part, they will have around 5 percentage of the peak uh, deviation. So in this kind of research, we're using the big data for the position data, we collect a lot of data, then we can use in uh, Temperature, sequential analysis by clustering, uh, then we can get the open pattern about building, how people use the building. And then we can use the pattern evaluation to identify this is a bit of the real application in a new scenario. And then we, we know the people when they will come to the office, but we also need to further identify how people. We are operating air conditioning, operate the daylight, uh, lighting issues, for instance. So um, it's very necessary to collect data, but the data is sometimes uh, very time consuming and they're using a lot of new sensors to do that. So uh, previously we're using the fixed uh, schedule to say you know, 8 o'clock in the morning we turn on the air conditioning and we switch off the air conditioning during the night time, for instance. It's really different with the final reality. So we are uh, develop a, a sensor to install the, into the, uh, the, um, the air conditioner and uh, to send out the send back the uh, operation uh, data for each air conditioner uh, in by uh, um, by five minutes every five minutes uh, in the last for two years. We got the data uh, uh, quite. Uh, Data sets is around 20,000 uh, set of the air conditioner and uh, it's over China. So, based on this kind of data collection, we can get enough data set for the VRV, VRF system operation data. Then, we using the, uh, some mechanical for the uh, simulation to get the behavior model for each air conditioner. And then Using this uh, cluster, uh, we, we can get four uh, typical person and know each typical person, their distribution in the population. 
then in our biology simulation in the future, then we just using five typical person to reflect the whole or ten thousand people. Then it's quite useful for the urban simulation. So here we we got a a, a very large scale of the uh, of occupant uh, behavior for the air conditioning usage, and uh, using the online uh, operation big data. And also it checks the typical of behavior as well as distribution. Then we came in this cluster to get five typical uh, uh, person and how their uh, energy usage. We may say that in the bedroom, the uh, the top uh, cluster of people, typical people, they consume around 100 kilowatt hour uh, cooling annually. But the cluster one, they use just 10. Uh, kilowatt hour cooling energy in a whole season, but the the less energy use people they come uh, they are uh, around maybe fifty population in China, but the the, the one hundred kilowatt hour intensity per person only zero point five per person. In this kind of way, we can understand the diversity of people. Uh, diversity is one kind of nature of people behavior, so we can know the population distribution and also their behavior in, in for different kinds of persons. And then if we come back to the uh, very, uh, evaluation part, we can see we're using the two simple t-tests uh, uh, to verify the consistency between the two cooling demands by the real uh, merit data with our simulation data. We can see the two uh, simulation data is quite uh, uh, close with the reality. So uh, and they will in, in this kind of way we can significantly decrease the variation from 30, uh, 32 to 2.5. So that's one kind of way we now uh, using in our uh, uh, air conditioning energy usage simulation. So in this kind of open behavior research, we're using the uh, VRV big data to generate the uh, people's behavior and then using the pattern recognition to test the pattern into five typical person, and then using this for the large scale of building standard uh, analysis. And another very important issue is try our best to detect is there any people inside a small office room or not. We, many of us are using the PR sensor to control the light, but we see some people, they say, so really, uh, uh, we say uh, sometimes really uh, uh, trouble making because people were working very really hard there to be switch off because they did not detect people uh, anymore. So they will switch uh, uh, switch off the light, make you uh, in, uh, into a dark uh, environment. So you need to wave your hand, then the light will turn on again. So there are some uh, smart students they put uh, a drinking bird before the PR sensor, they will continue the move to make the light on. But this is not the, the proportion, uh, the, 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 intention, uh, the, uh, the intention of this kind of a PR sensor control. So we would like to see uh, one of the AI way, machine learning way, to improve the PR sensor recognition uh, accuracy. So how we can do that? We can have a basic uh, concept that uh, yesterday, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, there are the people inside the room. And the many of the day in 10 o'clock in the morning, the people have a higher uh, possibility inside the room. And now, in the today, that you, if your sensor detects no people here, then we have a much more uh, confident to say maybe the, the, the sensor is wrong. So we using not using the current uh, sensor detection signal to detect the people, but also using the historical data to make the um, your, uh, detection more accurate. So uh, here, we using some um, uh, historical data try to make the uh, detection more accurate. So here, we're using um, kind of um, a sequence of the characteristic of presence uh, for generate an uh, ANN model. And based on this new uh, machine learning algorithm, we can see in this picture the real uh, occupancy rate 
in small transistors. There were people who stay in the room for a very long time. But the sensor, the PR sensor is not very con continuous. It was uh, a very lot of this kind of um, misdistinction. So uh, based on our new model here, we will have a much accurate estimation of detection of people's um, occupancy uh, inside the room. So here we're using the confusion matrix to evaluate the accuracy of our prediction control. Uh, here, the net, uh, false negative rate will be significantly decreased from uh, 6.9 to 0 0.2. It's quite uh, reliable for us to use in the uh, uh, occupancy detection. So here we say that we can have uh, quite a lot of new uh, sensors uh, we provide to detect people, but we can also use some of our knowledge about people. The people will not come in your office and then come, uh, in one second and then come, uh, come out. So that's our knowledge about people's behavior. Then using some of the new model to estimate the people's uh, detection. And then also we're using the uh, confusion uh, uh, matrix to evaluate the accuracy of the uh, people's detection. And also uh, based on this, uh, we not only if we go to the indoor air quality, sometimes we're not uh, satisfied by detect people's uh, occupancy uh, inside the room, but also want to know how many people are there in the room. For instance, like this kind of a hall we have meeting here, we, if we can count in the how many people are in there in the room, we can provide uh, the same equivalent of, of uh, the fresh air to cool it down. To so it's quite essential to count how many people they are there. Uh, here we'll be using some uh, multi sensor together to identify how many people are there. Firstly, we're using the PR sensor uh, in, as the entrance because PR sensor can detect how many people are there. But the PR sensor always have, have some accumulate error. That means if you, uh, the two people come in the room at the same time, it always detect one person, not two. But if the two people go out, they will have minus one or minus two people inside the room. That's the level. where something is wrong. So uh, we're also using some um, uh, desktop PR sensor to improve the accuracy of the sensor. And also using the smart meter data to uh, get the how many energy you use for your computer or also your light. Based on this multi sensor, Data we can uh, use this as input for your CNN model to estimate how many people are there in the room, and based on the uh, detection of the people number, we can also control the uh, fresh air volume uh, for the building. Here we can see uh, if we using the uh, different kind of uh, machine learning uh, algorithm, we we using all this data and uh, to estimate the uh, how many people are there? So the CNN model um, is built a uh, high accuracy compared with the other models. And uh, based on this uh, uh, people's members detection, we can also reduce the supply fresh air when the people are not so occupied. Occupied ratio is not so high, and we are achieve around the thirty-five percentage of the energy saving uh, by the cooling load part. So here we can say that if by the uh, new devices and the new uh, data like the um, electricity meter, we can collect, uh, we can collect a lot of new data. We can combine the different uh, ways of the uh, data together to better estimate how many people are there in one room. And using this to control the air conditioning systems and the other systems to make a better uh, energy environmental uh, systems. And uh, here is some detection. We know the current time step, how many people are there. But uh, if we wanted to know the future 24 hours people, for instance, if we are uh, in a big commercial building, sometimes we need to identify the uh, occupant ratio in the next 24 hours because they need to arrange the, the, uh, the parking slot and many of the 
uh, devices uh, systems. So we need to not only uh, know the current people's number, but also need to forecast the future 24 hours. And how we can do that? We firstly collect the historical people's numbers in the building, and then we can generate some typical profile about the people's uh, uh, profile in a day, and also using some uh, machine learning model to estimate the time series of the next 24 hours people's numbers. And uh, also we're using some uh, MAE or severe MSRIC to evaluate accuracy of our module. Here we're using uh, 16 public building data as the uh, testing uh, database. Uh, and also uh, the temp temperature resolution is one hour and uh, around two years of data for the uh, testing database. And the first day we do the time series of the analysis. That means of the optimization data is not a purely data. They have an internal, internal connection between the time. Uh, for instance, uh, they have a, a 24 hours of late, late between each other because uh, two, one day ago, uh, the, at the same time, they have a very strong relationship with the current people's number. And uh, we also say that's uh, 7 times 25. That's also not a very significant time relationship Numbers. So we're using the PACF to evaluate the time relationship between the data. And also uh, using the SEREMA model to estimate the time series of the next 24 hours and uh, combine it with the ANN model together. So by this kind of a new algorithm, we can easily to uh, forecast the future 24 hours of people's uh, rate and uh, decrease the errors from 23 percentage to 9.5. So uh, that is one kind of uh, uh, trail we would like to do uh, to, for the forecasting of people's uh, numbers in the next day. So here we, we also use big data on one uh, data, uh, uh, data and also uh, using the temperature sequential cross resting to set up our uh, machine learning model and uh, using the uh, MAE to uh, evaluate our uh, model's applicable ability. And also if we go beyond to the urban level, the people in the urban level, their behavior is super different. Uh, be the traditional or conventional way, we always assume the people are behavior are almost the same in the residential building. So if by our calculation, the people are uh, even they have uh, 10 buildings, residential buildings, the 10 buildings uh, consume almost the same level of energy consumption. But if you uh, we collect compared with our uh, marriage data, we, think we found that the people's behavior is so great uh, different. And uh, the total amount of the energy usage about 10 building is very different as one single building because the, the peak load will never uh, appear at the same time. So the, if you look at the urban level, the, the statistical uh, profile is very, very different as one single building. So that is also one big challenge for the urban simulation. So how we can employ better uh, often behavior model in the urban level? Another challenge. Here we induce the heterogeneity and also stochastic for the optimal behavior model in the urban level. In a simple word, is a, we assume the one distribution of people's diversity. For instance, some people prefer 26 degrees of the indoor set point uh, temperature in the summertime. Some people will prefer 28, some people will prefer 24. By our investigation, we get a distribution about their preference. And also, you induce the stochastic, especially for the occupancy rate, because some people, they come to go to work early, come back early, some come back home uh, late. So we consider this kind of stochastic between the people. So 
by this kind of uh, uh, way, we can define people uh, in a very different way, and uh, then we can see all the statistical uh, member together. We can say, especially in the uh, peak load part, there are around 10 percent deviation between the our conventional assumption as people are the same, and also from the uh, accumulate uh, curve part is very really different. So that in this kind of research, we may find that it's quite essential to understand the very variation between the present and also uh, we like to say how we can identify the difference between the, each other. And now uh, if we go from the urban level to uh, any policy level, and uh, they keep, we find that the behavior pair play a very essential role to connect the buildings and uh, uh, leading to a very large difference on the energy usage and the CO2 emission. Here in, in the code part is trying to limit people's behavior and also encourage people to behave better. So it's more like a stick, chamberlains and the carrots. We always say how we can drive a, a donkey move forward. We have three kind of way. Now this is very uh, in line with our policy. So here come to the behavior issue part. We also try to how we can identify the behavior in our standard, how we can evaluate people's energy use, how we can define the standard behavior. But how also we need to identify how we can improve the, the behavior and also how we can use better way to persuade or educate people to behave well. So that is a three kind of level of the work in the policy issue. So here we still have quite a lot of gap between our estimate behavior, current behavior with the future uh, behavior issue. So always there are some regulations say people will do, for instance, uh, there is uh, one policy to encourage people to switch off the uh, light uh, one hour, uh, all the people together in one year, just switch off the light one hour in one year. But this is uh, assumed to, uh, to educate people to save energy, but actually this people to create a big shock because they shut, uh, shut down the, the electricity use very rapidly give a big challenge to the grid. So that is some kind of uh, things we need to identify the behavior issues in the policy part. And uh, uh, as what kind of uh, uh, behavior research summary, in the data collection part, we previously use quite a lot of field tests to, to detect people's behavior and also using instrumental way and also questionnaire like a public survey, and uh, also currently we use a lot of big data to identify people's behavior. But this is a really related to new technology to uh, strengthen the data accessibility to make people, us to understand people's behavior. There's quite a lot of new uh, devices, new sensors. For instance, there's a, we, we can measure people how, they, how many steps they have uh, uh, works during a day, there's a lot of new uh, information. But uh, still, we need to, based on this some kind of data, we need to connect with our uh, series or our knowledge about, about people, about the build, building technology, to give the, uh, to re, re explain the, what happened during their behavior. Uh, and this is very connected with, for instance, area of the thermal comfort. So the feature analysis work make us to understand people mm -hmm. and to improve the occupant behavior interoperability. And also uh, we need to use high performance modeling techniques to uh, incorporate deprived model to improve accuracy of our model, both for the pattern recognition but also the future forecast behavior issues. At the last, uh, it's very really important to, to say because we are modeling people, we see all the models very accurate, but how this
this can be applied with a real, the real application. The, the model is not derived for the real application in some way. So they always have a big gap how we can have during this uh, in the design and also control. So different kind of application from my point of view need to have a different evaluation algorithm. So the fitting for purpose uh, evaluation is so super important to improve the model reliability in the real application. So that is something I we already uh, have done before. But we see from the challenge about climate change and also the variable population, like all the people, young people, and also we can see the urban planning issues and also policy makers, uh, they cannot available aware about this kind of important issues. So in the next step, what we can do? For instance, uh, from my point of view currently, we have many focus on the average person. We have uh, quite a lot information about the older people, young people, for instance, uh, the young people, uh, like a, a baby, they are, because they are shocked, their eye cannot, uh, the vision is not like the audience. So we, we need to identify their vision and to improve their environment. And for the older people, when they sleep in, uh, when they live in a single room, uh, they are uh, in the room, we need to use some new uh, sensors to detect if they are falling down to the ground. We, for instance, we're using some king net to detect the position about the uh, older people. If they're falling down and cannot um, stand up again, then we can um, provide some uh, signal to the uh, hospital to give them some assistance. So that is one kind of really important things we need to continuously uh, working in the behavior issues. And also, uh, like the because climate migration give us quite a lot of challenge, uh, both for the heat wave and the cold storm. And uh, this, in this kind of seasons, the grid have a great pressure, and how we can have more resi uh, resilience behavior and also adaptive behavior. Uh, so also, not only behavior itself, but also connect with uh, our building design. It's a, uh, this is a big challenge for us, and how we can make these things uh, uh, together is one uh, super important issue. Another is uh, uh, currently uh, we, we do the work, many focus on the building and room level, but we get less uh, data and knowledge about people's movement and transportation and also their behavior in the urban level. And uh, this is a, a very connection mobility, strong acidity, and heterogeneity about peoples in the urban level. So that is one kind of issue. We will strongly connect the urban planning and also many of the, for instance, like the behavior change. Uh, many of us now working at home uh, much more than uh, four years ago before the pandemic. So that is give us quite a lot of uh, new uh, challenge for this. The last is for the uh, policy part. In before mainly uh, we are focused on the energy efficiency. We try to improve the COP of Chile uh, to make the high efficiency. Here. But here we can, um, we, we finally we just want to reduce the energy usage to achieve the net zero energy building and the net zero emission uh, building this is, by this uh, equi uh, equation, we can say the efficiency is just uh, here, but we also need to consider the total demand. What is a reasonable uh, uh, demand is one kind of a very important uh, concept we so called sufficiency. What is the sufficiency demand for the people? It's not necessary to sacrifice the thermal comfort. For instance, if you are not at home, you don't necessarily turn on the light, do not necessarily to turn on the air conditioning. And if you have the sensors to detect you are close with your home, maybe 0 0.5 miles away, they will automatically turn on the air conditioning and, and then you can come to home at a very comfortable uh, indoor temperature. So 
that is make people happy and at the same time save a lot of energy. So this is need us to give a lot of uh, more uh, focus on the flexibility about the control about the indoor environment and also the people's behavior issues. So that is a, a big challenge for us to improve behavior research. So as a one conclusion, uh, we have just start, started the uh, behavior studies. But this kind of studies so, uh, not only purely doing simulation area of the research, but also connect with many, many aspects like sociology, psychology, uh, and also economic part. Uh, a systematic research framework of doing simulation part can be divided into the data collection, future age feature analysis and the model establish and also model evaluation. And one conclusion that more and more research are necessary to perform in the future to make behavior research into real application. That is a still a lot of challenge we are facing. And we hopefully more and more people will join this kind of work and develop into this kind of work. Uh, and by the way, I would like to also introduce my uh, our journal. Uh, Building Simulation Journal is the uh, first academic journal in building performance simulation field. And uh, now it's the uh, um, introduction to 5.5 like in that by next year. And the scope is uh, not only simulation itself, but with so called building and simulation. It's also including thermal comfort and many uh, big data and uh, AI uh, issues. And uh, we also including the building thermal lighting. And also, like the architecture, human behavior issues, and also advanced building simulation tool, and also like the software, uh, big data, uh, data set, uh, uh, like scientific data. And uh, our uh, channel is a double blind review uh, process. So, the reviewer uh, will not know you, and you will not know the reviewer. And uh, we will uh, review the So welcome to submit your re new research to the, our channel and uh, uh, hopefully enjoy the talk today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Well, how do you know that? 
sometimes people might have two um, two iPad on mobile phone. And one is not to actually see that. Oh, this is actually two adults with one kid. You know how do we actually get to get them into that? Thank you. Thank you for your good question. Yeah. So exactly the, the key issue how we can estimate. We say estimate, not the predict people's behavior, how many people are there. Especially in the design phase, we just estimate because we cannot predict uh, uh, for the very long term. And uh, for the uh, hotel room, there's a many, uh, just, I noticed there's a very interesting uh, way to collect data. They're using the uh, we, because uh, some hotel they need to put the card uh, when you come back the uh, hotel room. Then they will they have some signal to record this uh, time when you come back. But the the, the thing is, uh, if you are in the room, definitely the car signal will be on. But sometimes you go out your hotel, but still put another car there. Uh, this is some uh, we say arrows there, but uh, um, from my point of view, before in before we we just as some expert sitting together to put one schedule and say this is a uh, uh, people's uh, occupancy rate pattern uh, or schedule, but actually the performance is super different. So I think this new method definitely have some error inside, but it's more accurate than definitely. More accurate than our previous estimation. Uh, the, sen the second question is for the how we can identify how many people are there in the room. Exactly like you mentioned, there are several people that have two cell phones, uh, one uh, tablet, for instance. And some uh, little baby, they don't have cell phone or other devices. So uh, uh, normally we will do some um, test and variation by the manual, uh, we calculate how many people one room to compare the with our position data uh, number. We actually the uh, the only we can detect around 0 0.7 percent uh, numbers in one room here. So we the, the pattern we got is uh, also estimated data, not real data. And I think this is a, the pattern we extract from the data is more reliable than the previous. But uh, the, the absolute, absolutely uh, value is sometimes different than the, uh, our real data. So uh, this is one kind of uh, um, disadvantage for this kind of data we collect. But uh, I think from uh, the development, by development of technology, this kind of uh, data will be more accurate than, uh, than before. So there's, uh, uh, there's more and more new way to detect people's behavior. So that is uh, my thinking for this. Thank you. Thanks, Professor. Um, other questions? Thank you for Professor Daniel for uh, your insight and presentation. And so I noticed you mentioned the uh, detecting the occupancy scenario and using those data for your um, the air supply in the room based on the occupancy scenario. So my question is, um, because based on my limited knowledge, I know there is some delay between the systems and also the uh, mechanical service facilities. So maybe um, um, the sensor detectors can be in the room and it sends this uh, message to the facility. But the facility would uh, may maybe have hour or maybe two hours to uh, transfer to change the schedule. So um, I think that's also why um, many rooms are only using the standards like they're using the maximum of the scenario to design the room because the, set, um, the facilities themselves cannot um, respond very quickly. So it's always possible to use the IBM systems like the IBM system itself can and the sensors can respond very quickly but the facilities themselves cannot. So I wonder, um, based on that case, is that still um, reasonable or valuable to um, to 
Uh -huh. to the yeah, yeah. so complex, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is a very good question for this. Uh, I, I think you're absolutely right, because the devices, uh, they perform not as quickly as mm -hmm. the people's behavior uh, uh, to, to change. So the algorithm we are now using is uh, more like an average, uh, smoothly average model to do this, not to do the action so quickly. So uh, I think this is a uh, super so right, and uh, I would like to add that uh, that is uh, sometimes because uh, we are now facing more and more renewable energy uh, adaptation in the uh, grid systems. So uh, it gives us uh, this kind of research gives us a lot of potential for the uh, flexibility about the energy usage in the building. So maybe we can use this as one potential to uh, adjust the more and more uh, renewable energy in the, uh, our building service system. And uh, this is a more pioneer research. And uh, we do this kind of uh, field test in the uh, one chamber uh, and test bed. So uh, uh, all these devices are more optimized and uh, not uh, designed like the same way. And uh, also uh, in the real application, we would like to say we will have a more long uh, 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 adjust for the fresh air, because the indoor we have a big volume of air, and we can easily to control the indoor in a long uh, time step rather than like a five minutes or one minute. It's not a feasible. So uh, I think it was a really very good question. But uh, we, we are now to the pioneer research, and the future we would like to connect this, connect this with uh, the grid with the renewable energy energy uh, generation make the system more uh, uh, more green. That is uh, our final target. So that is nothing. I haven't talked this uh, in my presentation. Thank you for your to read this uh, sharp question. Thank you. Thanks, Professor. Uh, and there is a question to Dr. Waako from U.S. and Stephanie O'Kenna. Okay, uh, nice to meet you, Professor Yan. And uh, I have two questions. The first of all, as you know, uh, currently most of the building they have already integrated with a lot of renewable energy resource, and therefore, I say the people in the building they change their behavior a lot, adapted to the renewable energy resource. Like, for example, if we had the solar power, so maybe they come after the solar. I say after the sun is enough, and they change their behavior a lot. And I saw a little. Not that much paper discussing this, but your topic definitely opened a window to this research because, as you just mentioned, you can easily combine with the renewable renewable energy resource and connect it to the green. So this is my first question. The second question is that, as you know, uh, the power of AI, and I can see that you currently mode, I say, one building, and you want to integrate and want to, I say. Uh, move it to, I say, community level or even to the entire city level. So it means that each of the building will be an agent. So we can use the, as I, I heard you mentioned the cloud. I don't know whether the framework has been deployed in the cloud. I say the center, I say can computing center deploy in the cloud and then each building is one of the agent. Definitely, for example, the AI technique like the large language models can help you to deal with huge amount of data. So. Uh, and also there are a lot of risk, interesting research questions there, like the privacy issues because each building or each office, they don't want to share the data with each other, they only want to share data with the cloud, and how to deploy the computing, I say, uh, algorithms at different levels, so other questions. So I, I, so I just want to see whether you have already, I say, had uh, some interesting outcomes related to these two topics. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you for your question. It's a, it's a very uh, tough question. First, uh, firstly, uh, uh, because of uh, more and more renewable energy, as you mentioned, the PV uh, electricity is generated in the daytime. So the peak, uh, peak time for the energy usage is the night time now, rather than the before it's in the afternoon. So this gives us uh, quite a lot of the things happen than before. But I, from my point of view, not the behavior, not change so greatly by this renewable adaptation. 
people only sometimes washing their clothes a little bit late, not uh, they change their schedule a little bit, but not uh, change their behavior so significantly because people are not uh, change their behavior so quickly. Uh, they will continuously walking uh, as their way. So the behavior change sometimes we observe so by generation. The young generation is different than like our generation. That, that, that is one kind of a way, a way important to uh, connect with the education, the, uh, like the new uh, social media to encourage people to uh, change their behavior. It's long term, uh, not short term. But in short term, they are, if we provide some information to say, uh, if you do something like this, you will save, uh, save half energy, uh, 50% save money, they will definitely will we'll have quite a lot of people to do. So, so that is uh, one kind of uh, way we would like to help people to change their behavior. But the background technology is trying to identify, rather, really, if you do something like this, there will be save energy, benefit to the way, benefit to renewable energy. So that is one kind of things we would like to do. But not uh, do the, uh, currently it's not do, uh, do this kind of job we are now. Good, not good enough. For the second, uh, uh, you mentioned a very good concept and a very good point that uh, definitely uh, in the future each building will be one uh, point uh, in the grid and also they will be have definitely a lot of flexibility and if you can control a thousand of build buildings together, they will achieve a big uh, potential to our flexibility. Uh, currently, we are doing the work based on the, uh, our design phase, or we do the scenario analysis, not into the real-time control, not go to real-time control, but all we do the uh, analysis by four years to test the robustness, the potential, to demonstrate how the rescue will be had uh, to do some of this kind of research currently. So you are raising a very good point that in the future, if we go to the real building, the for the real time uh, control, that we definitely we need to estimate the future and that the prediction of work is also very difficult. And also the privacy issue, because we don't want to show the, our knowledge, our information to your building. So at that time, maybe some federal learning uh, algorithm we can induce into uh, the new AI technology into the, this kind of uh, work. There's a lot of tools there, but we need to identify the potential first, and then we can go in deep for this uh, research. Thank you for the question. Thanks, Professor Da. Because of the time, and if you have more questions, you can catch up with Professor Da after the talk. So please join me to thank Professor Da for your amazing talk. Thank you. Thank you very much.